My name is Ron van Erik. I work in DG Energy in the unit which is responsible or is dealing with the uh, Renewable Energy Directive. Um, and we commissioned a study uh, that looks at local acceptance of uh, renewable energy projects and more specifically what can be done to improve that local acceptance. Um, the preliminary conclusions when we, when we look and assess these different types of schemes and what works and what doesn't work and so on is that, oh, is that um, first of all the transparency when applying such mechanisms and political support are key. Um, furthermore, it is important that the returns are directly to the, sorry, to the local community. Furthermore, um, it appears that the, the more indirect and softer mechanisms, such as tourism, prestige, and stimulation of the regional economy, um, seem to be quite effective in general. Um, direct involvement uh, of citizens seems to be appealing. I mean, if we are talking the way towards a low carbon society, I mean, then it's not in, a, not, not in my backyard. I mean, then it will have to be somehow reflected in everybody's backyard. So I think that we should sort of find a way to portray this as a positive thing. It's not an, a negative thing. It's probably also what is implied in what you say. It's not something about that we cannot have mobility, that we cannot have energy, that we will have to go you know, in, in gray and black and everything is very, very dull life. It's about doing this in an intelligent way and hopefully also framing it that if we do it intelligently and timely, then those who are the front runners could actually also benefit from it. Yeah, you can stand for low carbon, you can stand for being smart. And I think these are two major important drivers we can build regarding any industrial projects, also for the low carbon technologies. But if I would be in the low carbon energy technologies, I would build in low carbon as a, as a general, because we are going for low carbon for, for furniture production. We are going for low carbon technologies for, I don't know, car production. So the low carbon issue is not only for the energy project itself, but it's the most generic change within the industrial world as a such. And therefore, I think that there is a further place for build in that low carbon uh, movement. There's the possibility that um, at a local level there's a democratic de deficit. It's already been mentioned. Those who object um, shout louder than those who are for a facility and therefore you end up with a democratic um, imbalance. And that's kind of, the, uh, kind of the evidence for that is mixed but I think there probably are examples there. Um, uh, and w what's the solution to that? Nothing straightforward but you have to then think through if you, if you suspect it's a, a local democratic deficit how would you strengthen local demo democracy? So that's either including including um, uh, uh, wider voices, um, having local referenda. None of those are straightforward, but I think, again, it touches on one of the things which will come back time and time again. It's mechanism, appropriate mechanisms for involving local communities. Uh, FIUDEN is a state-owned foundation created by the Spanish government with the uh, first objective of stimulating the declining economy of a coal mining area. It was created five years ago, approximately. Our action lines uh, were several, but always with the same target. First, promoting CCS. Second, uh, promote the restoration of uh, affected areas by the mining activity, and creating something awkward, the National Energy Museum in the Pilgrim's Way to Santiago, to inform about it. Uh, this is an area where uh, coal has been the support for the economy for long years. Now, unfortunately, declining. So we have been created as a non-profit organization. We are constructing, with the support of the European Commission, the largest ever oxycombustion experimental plant in the world. The largest ever. I will provide that as when required. And we are, at the same time, starting activities to have an experimental site for CO2 injection and monitoring. But by the time, uh, what we have perceived is that uh, the population have received this action very positively. Because these, of course, are recognized favorable conditions, but also because our actions have been based not on a business framework, 
our actions has been based and is based on knowledge and scientific communication and, and rigor. I think with the technologies that can be implemented with low resistance at great speed, they of course have the effect that they can contribute to the problem we're trying to tackle with more immediacy. Edith spoke about the pension issue in wherever it was, Bulgaria or Romania, but many countries may, may face that. I think that we are now in a time where as a result of the financial crisis, that governments feel in their coffers, that companies feel in their budgets, and that individual consumers feel in their wallets, I think we should give more attention to value for money considerations in achieving our targets. The objectives should not be negotiated down, they should stay as they are, but I think in this time of financial constraint, we should make, be more aware of that as well, and so hence the uh, thoughts about what can you do with gas, what can you do with biofuels, because they can perhaps be blended into the pool without having to convince people to the same extent as what you have to do something very big under their backyard or in their backyard.